Good evening, good evening. This is Lynette, and it's the 21st Century Watchman's Channel. And it's about time. It's about time. It's a one-year chronological Bible study where we go through the entire books of the Bible in time order. And we're now in the book of Daniel, chapters 1 through 3. Let's get started, shall we? All right. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles of the house of God. And he brought them into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and brought the articles into the treasury of his God. Right? He got treasury, got the king, got some people. And the Babylonian king told Ashpenaz, the, the chief of his officials, to bring in some of the sons of Israel, including some of, from the royal family and from the nobles, young men without blemish and handsome in appearance. Skillful in all wisdom, endowed with intelligence and discernment. He meant when he said without blemish, he doesn't necessarily mean not having a um, uh, a pimple on their skin, but he was more or a scar. He was more concerned with uh, them being lame or not having, you know, not being physically fit. He wanted them to be fit. He didn't want any. He, he had a certain type he was looking for, and that's kind of how that went. It says, and quick to understand, competent to stand in the presence of the king. They had to be poised. They had to not be afraid. Couldn't be, you know, probably stutterers. All the things that he was looking for. He wanted people to be polished. He was looking for that group. And it says, and able to serve in the king's palace. He also ordered Ashpenaz to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. So these are going to be the top-notch group, right? This is what he was asking for. The king assigned a daily ration for them from his finest food and from the wine which he drank. They were to be educated and nourished this way for three years so that at the end of that time, they were prepared to enter the king's service. So he had a you know, regimen. He had a, a diet. He'd given them the finest stuff, and he wanted to make sure that they were ready after they had been trained. Among them from the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The commander of the officials gave them Babylonian names, right? Daniel, he named Belteshazzar. Hananiah, he named Shadrach. Mishael, he named Meshach. And Azariah, he named Abednego. But Daniel made up his mind that he would not defile or which taint or dishonor himself with the king's finest food or with the wine which the king drank. So he asked the commander of the officials that he might be excused so that he would not defile himself. He wasn't eating because they were probably eating the stuff that they weren't allowed to eat as Hebrews. God didn't have them eating uh, things with blood still in them. He didn't have them eating the fish with the scale, with, you know, that the the wrong kind of fish that, you know, like the crab and a shrimp. He didn't want those kinds of things. And he didn't have, the, nope, none of the bottom feeders. God didn't have him eating pork. A lot of the things they weren't allowed to eat, they had a dietary regimen that the Hebrews were to maintain that kept them separate from, or the Israelites had, it kept them separate from the other people. And he didn't want to, to do that because he was still serving his God in his heart. So I, I put down here, he named, you name me what? I know it sounds a little funny, but because he changed their names, right? So Daniel, which meant God is my judge, went, from, went to Belt Shazar, means Baal protect the king. So Baal, meaning as in Baal, you know. So he moved him from his own God to Baal. Then Hananiah, Yahweh has been gracious, went to Shadrach, inspired by Aku. Aku is God of the moon. So he's inspired by the God of the moon. The moon God inspires him. What is that all about? He's going, and this is the arrogance of, um, of um, our boy Nebuchadnezzar. Mishael, who is what God is? is that's what his name was. This is, this is who, he's who is what God is. And he went to Meshach, belonging to a coup. He belonged to the God of the moon. The other one was inspired by the God of the moon, or inspired of the God of the moon. This one is um, belonging to the God of the moon. And then Azariah, who's saying Yahweh has helped him, or Yahweh has helped, he went to Abednego, certain of, uh, he's a servant of Nego, who was the God over learning. So we, we went to all of, uh, or a few of, Nebuchadnezzar's gods, and they, he gave them his gods uh, protection, his godly names, because they need to be that. Um, it, it makes you wonder 
um, during the time when, I mean, Moses' name stayed Moses, even though he was leaving, living in the king's palace as well. And, re and remember, let's not forget that Joseph's name was changed once he got to the king's palace. The king will change your name, won't he? But here we go. Just want to throw that out there. And thank God, the, you know, we don't have to worry about our name being changed to the Baal's name. Let's get it together. Be careful what we name our children. Now, God granted Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the commander of the officials. And the commander of the officials said to Daniel, I'm afraid for, of my lord, the king, who has prearranged your food and your drink. For why should he see your faces looking more haggard than young men who are your own age? Then you would make me forfeit my head to the king. I don't want to be disobeying this man now. What, you, what, you, what we're not going to do is making y'all look all sickly because y'all not eating this choice food. But Daniel said to the overseer from the, uh, whom the commander of the officials had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servants for 10 days and let us be given some vegetables to eat and water to drink. Just give us a week and some, some change, a week and a half. I promise you we're going to be okay. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the young men who eat the king's finest foods be observed and compared by you and deal with your servants in accordance with what you see. So let's just let let's just see. Can you give it ten days to see if we're gonna, you know, have any problems? If we're gonna have problems, then you then you be the judge. But you know, I'm I would give us ten days. At least give us some time before you make this determination. Give us a chance. So the man listened to them in this matter and tested them for ten days. And at the end of the ten days, it seemed that they were looking better and healthier than all the young men who ate the king's finest food. Because when you do what God says. It's always better than everything man has to say. So the overseer continued to withhold their fine food and the wine they were to drink. Because the guy wants you to be sober-minded. He don't want you drinking all that wine. And kept them, kept giving them vegetables. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill and all kinds of literature and wisdom. Daniel also understood all kinds of visions and dreams. So listen, the, they, he gave them skills, all of them. Because the, the young, other young men didn't speak up. Daniel was the one to speak up. So the, the Lord also understood, you know, gave him to understand all kinds of visions and dreams. Sometimes there's always one in your group that just stands out and, and, and um, stands for everybody. Now, I, the other three didn't complain. They might have felt some kind of way, but they didn't say anything. But Daniel spoke up. It's, we have to speak up for ourselves. We have personal relationships with the Lord. We have to speak up for ourselves. Let's go. At the end of the time set by the king to bring all the young men before him, the commander of the officials presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king spoke with them and among them all, not one was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they were selected and assigned to stand before the king and enter his personal service. See, when God sets you apart, there you are. King, that, that cream, doesn't it rise to the top? When you are standing for God, he will make sure you're noticed. You don't have to do anything. They were asking for less and got more. Look how you, you don't have to try to position yourself and make sure you're talking to the right people. God will make sure that you are seen before who you need to be seen for. These are just my thoughts. I'm going to still keep going. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king consulted them, he found them ten times better than all the learned magicians and enchanters, the magi, in his whole realm. He was more, he was more, or they were more wise than all of those uh, people that he had that was a part of his team for all this time. And Daniel remained there until the first year of the reign of King Cyrus um, over Babylon. Now, this was the, at the end of the 70 year exile of Judah, the southern kingdom um, in Babylonia, as foretold by Jeremiah. And this is what said Jeremiah 29 10. This is what the Lord says You will be in Babylon for 70 years. But but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. God is faithful to his word, is he not? He's faithful. He said he was going to do it. Whether it be good or bad, he's faithful to it. We need to choose the good part. Let's go. Daniel 2. In the second year, 604 BC, of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams which troubled and disturbed him, and, or disturbed his spirit and interfered with his ability to sleep. Then the king gave a command to call the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to tell the king his dreams. 
So they came in and stood before the king. The king said to them, I had a dream and my spirit is troubled and anxious to know the content and meaning of the dream, right? He wants to know what's, what's really good with these dreams because I don't understand them and they're disturbing me. Then the Chaldeans said to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell the dream to your servants and we will declare the interpretation. The king replied to the Chaldeans, my command is firm and unchangeable. Uh-oh, I'm about to say some stuff. It's because it's firm and unchangeable. I, I'm going to say what I say. If you do not reveal to me the content of the dream along with its interpretation, you shall be cut into pieces and your houses shall be made a heap of rubbish. This man was, he went, literally, I went from zero to 100 real quick. This is some, some crazy talk. If you don't tell me what I'm supposed to know, what I want to know, I'm going to kill you and chop you up. It's not, that's, that's some torture right there. But if you tell me in the, in the content of the dream, along with inter its interpretations, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and its interpretation. They answered again, let the king tell the dream to his servants and we will explain this interpretation to you. The king replied, I know for certain that you are be bargaining for, for time. He already know. I know y'all trying to waste some time. This is filibustering at its best. This is like Congress and going on and, you know, it's, it's a lot going on here. They filibustering because you have seen that my command to you is firm and irrevocable. I, you, oh, you, you trying to get me to repeat it so I can, you can, you know, bide your time. No. If you will not reveal to me the content of the dream, there is but one sentence for you. For you have already prepared lying and corrupt words, and you have agreed together to speak them before me, hoping to delay your execution until the situation is changed. Therefore, tell me the dream first, and then I will know with confidence that you can give me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth who can tell the king this matter, for no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such a thing as this of any magician or enchanter or Chaldean. Furthermore, what the king demands is an unusual and difficult thing indeed. He didn't tell him it was impossible, basically. I mean, he's saying it, but he didn't say it. He didn't tell him this was preposterous. He didn't say that you out your mind if you think we're going to even attempt this bad boy because they knew better than doing that. He didn't want to be disrespectful, but he was just trying to let the man know, bro, this is a hard thing to ask of us, but here we go. So no one except the gods can reveal it to the king, and their dwelling is not with mortal flesh. So it's not amongst us, bro. Because of this, the king was indignant and extremely furious because he was mad. You can, you can pretty it up, but you're still not giving him what he wants. All that matters is he gets what he wants and gave a command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree went out that the wise men, here's the decree, the royal decree, to be killed. And they look for Daniel and his companions to be put to put them to death. This is what a, a, um, a uh, decree looks like. Then Daniel replied with discretion and wisdom to Ariok. See, discretion and wisdom. Because you got to be discreet. We just can't say everything that we want to. Everything that comes up should not come out. These are just my thoughts. Then Daniel replied with discretion and wisdom to Ariok, the um, captain of the kingdom's bodyguard, who had gone out to ex execute the wise men of Babylon. He went out to, he was on his way to kill him. He said to Ariok, the king's captain, why is the decree from the king so harsh and urgent? Bro, why we got to do it quickly? Why we got to, what's, what, why is it so extreme? What's up with this? And then Ariok explained the matter to Daniel. So Daniel went in and asked the king to appoint a date and give him a time so that he might reveal to the king the interpretation of the dream. All right. Then Daniel returned to his house and discussed the matter with Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, in order that they might seek compassion from the God of heaven regarding this secret, so that Daniel and his companions would not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night, and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered. <laughs> so he blessed God. Thank you, Father God. Bless me the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and power belong to him. We got to remember that. That wisdom and power belong to the Lord. It is he who changes the times and seasons. He removes the kings and establish the kings, establishes the kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and greater knowledge to those who have understanding. It is he who reveals the profound and hidden things. You got to thank the Lord and call him and say, the, call him for what he is and say who he is once you get what you want. You just can't. 
beg for stuff and don't and you don't give him praise afterwards. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells within him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. Because after, after he asked him for it, he praised him. You got to give God the glory. You got to give him the due. For you have given me wisdom and power. Even now you have made known to me what we requested of you. For you have made known to us the, the solution to the king's matter. So Daniel went to Arioch whom the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said to this to him, do not execute the wise men of Babylon. Stop. In other words, stop. Bruh, stop. I got it. I got it here. Bring me before the king, and I will reveal to the king the interpretation of his dream. Then Arioch hurriedly brought Daniel before the king and said, said this to him, I have found a man among the exiles of Judah who can explain to the king the interpretation of the dream. The king said to Daniel, whose Babylonian name was Belteshazzar, are you able to reveal to me the content of the dream, which I have seen and its interpretation? Daniel answered the king and said, Well, regarding the mystery about which the king has inquired, neither the wise men, enchanters, magicians, nor astrologers are able to answer the king. But there is a God in heaven. <laughs> hey, hey, but I know a man from Galilee. How about that? I'm just saying. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will take place in the latter days. It's going to ha happen later on. He's giving him a futuristic um, view. How about that? This was your dream and the vision that appeared in your mind while on your bed. As for you, O king, as you were lying on your bed, thoughts came into your mind about what will take place in the future. And he who reveals secrets has shown you what will occur. Remember, our God is a God that will reveal secrets. You got mysteries in your mind. People have brought mysteries to you. Ask God to reveal those secrets. Don't sit there bamboozled and, and, and baffled and befuddled. You have well, but not bamboozled, but befuddled and and um and bewildered. You have to ask him, ask God, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. That's the word. That's Matthew seven seven. That one was for free. How about that? But as for me, this secret has not been revealed to me because my wisdom is greater than that of any other living man. But in order to make the interpretation known to the king so that you may fully understand the thoughts of your mind. You, O king, were looking, and behold, there was a single great statue. The image, which was large and of unsurpassed splendor, stood before you, and its appearance was awesome and terrifying. As for the statue, its head was made of fine gold, its breast and its arms of silver, its belly and its thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay, like pottery. So remember, he wanted them to tell them what his dream was. He didn't just want to hear the interpret. That's how upset he was because he knew they were filibustering. He wanted to stop it since y'all going to bide your time and try to, you know, play me. You got to tell me what the dream was. Daniel comes out, here's your dream. Here's your dream, bro. Love this. The Lord gave it to him. As you were looking, a stone was cut out without hands, and it struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and crushed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like the chaff from the summer threshing floors. Oh, it like like from the wheat. That's how it crushed that iron like that, right? And the bronze and the silver and the gold. And the wind carried them away so that no, not a trace of them could be found. And the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Reminds me of how the king was asking Joseph of these dreams, how to interpret these dreams. The Lord gave him the answer. We got to, the Lord can give us anything. We have to ask the Lord. There's nothing too hard for him. This was the interpret. This was the, um, the dream. Now we will tell the king its interpretation. You, O king, are the king of earthly kings, to whom the God of heaven has given to the, the kingdom, the power and the strength and the glory. And wherever the sons of men dwell and the beasts of the field and the birds of the heavens, he has given them into your hand and has made you rule over them all, ruler over them all. You, king of Babylon, are the head of gold. After you will rise another king, uh, Medo Persia, inferior to you, and then a third king of bronze, Greece, under Alexander the Great, which will rule over all the earth. So Alexander the Great is going to rule over all the earth like you did. Um, the Medo Persia will not, but um, and you know, but this Alexander the Great is going to. Let's go. Then a fourth kingdom, Rome, will be as strong as iron, for iron breaks into piece, breaks to pieces and shatters all things. And like iron, which crushes things in pieces, it will break and crush all these others. And as you saw the feet and toes 
partly of potter's clay and partly of iron. It will be a divided kingdom, but there will be in it some of the durability and, and um, strength of iron, just as you saw the iron mixed with the common clay. There's, so the people are going to be mixed, and they're going to be able to get this done. So, the, so some of the kingdom will be strong, and another part of it will be brittle. And as you saw the iron mixed with the common clay, so they will combine with one another in the seeds of men. So they're going to be mixed. But they will not merge for such diverse things or ideologies cannot unite, even as iron does not mix with clay. They're not going to join together as a group, but they're going to mix blood. They're, they're going to do some things, um, but, but they're not going to, um, they're still going to be who they are and individuals. In the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Here we, here we go. Here we go. It is a foretelling of it will never be destroyed. Nor will its sovereignty be left for another people. But it will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms, and it will stand forever. That's the kingdom of the Lord. Just as you saw that a stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it crushed the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has revealed to the king that what will take place in the future. So the dream is true, and its interpretation is trustworthy. So here we go. The head of gold which was the assyrio babylonish monarchy, the lion, Nebuchadnezzar, up the head. In the breast and the arms was metal Persia. This is the um, breast of arms and silver up here. Then the uh, breast and arms of silver up here. Then the belly and, and thighs of brass down in this area. The Greco-Macedonian kingdom, the leopard, right? That's who that is. Because once the lion, the bear, and the leopard. Alexander the Great was the leopard. And Nebuchadnezzar was the, um, the lion. And uh, Cyrus... And Darius are the bear, the legs of iron, the great Roman Empire under the under under the Caesars down here, and then the feet and toes, part iron and part clay. They they say people are saying that one is the one of the toes is Italy, the other one's France, the other one's England, then it's Belgium and Holland, Portugal, Prussia, Austria, Spain, and Greece are the ten toes. That's these are the kingdoms that have come from this whole little group. But the end at the end. They mention about the lion, the king that's going to stand forever. That empire is the lion of Judah. And although it's not depicted really good here, because um, he's not the lion. He's definitely not the lion. Because the, the lion of Judah is going to be that. But this is one um, artist's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Just thought I'd throw it out there. Ready? Let's go. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell face downward and paid respect to Daniel as a great prophet of the highest God and gave orders for an offering and fragrant incense to be presented to him in honor of his God. The king answered Daniel and said, Most certainly your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries, since you have been able to reveal this mystery. Then the king promoted Daniel because of what God did and because, of God, because Daniel saw God's guidance. God will promote you. You don't have to, um, to do anything other than be available and to ask him. I'm just throwing it out there. Since you have been able to reveal this mystery, then the king promoted Daniel to an exalted position and gave him many great gifts, and he made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and chief governor over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel made a request of the king, and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon while Daniel was at the court of the king. He kept him, kept him close because he was so smart. Being, so don't, don't, and don't um, give your kids a hard time that are smart. And don't you hide your, your, your abilities or your intelligence either. You don't dumb yourself down. God has used for you. He's made you that way for a reason. Daniel 3, let's go. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, um, the king made a gold-plated image whose height, including the pedestal, was 60 cubits, 90 feet, and it's with six cubits, 9 feet. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. The Nebuchadnezzar, then, I said, then Nebuchadnezzar, the king sent word to the assemble, uh, to assemble the sat, um, satraps, um, or satra, uh, satraps, or satraps. It looks really real, right? Such, um, uh, satraps, the per, the prefects and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates and lawyers, and all the chief officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, and the, magist the magistrates and lawyers, and all the chief officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. 
right? And they stood before it. Okay. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, you are the commanded, O people, nations, or you are commanded, O people, nations, and speakers of every language, that at the moment you hear the sound of a horn, pipe, lyre, um, the uh, trigon, which is a four-stringed harp, the dulcimer, the bagpipe, and all kinds of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. You want to make people bow down. So this is kind of a precursor to the mark of the beast, where you have to, to, to take the mark of the beast. You have to bow down to this guy. Now, that's not okay. I'm just saying. There, so this was no free worship. This is this is a monarchy, and he and and um, um some, and there's one person that was ruling. And you had to, and he wanted you to worship his image. The Lord had already told them not to bow down and not to make any graven images and not to worship any god before them. This is going to be a thing. Are we ready for when this when the time comes? Are we are we going to bow down and worship another god because we are trying to save our own lives? So so it says. At this, that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and brought malicious accusations against the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, dulcimer, bagpipe, and all kinds of music is to fall down and worship the golden image. Whoever does not fall and worship shall be thrown into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the administration of the province of Babylon, namely... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have paid no attention or, or pay no attention to you. They're not doing it. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. There's always one willing to tell on you, isn't there? Always one. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in a furious rage, gave a command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of a horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, to fall down and worship the image which I have made. Very good. But if you do not worship, you shall be thrown at once into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there who can rescue um, you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to answer you on this point. If it is be so... Our God, whom we serve, is able to rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Whether you do it or not, I'm, we're not going to serve. We're not going to um, serve your gods, and we're not going to worship your gods. We're not doing that. Now, we're working in your service because we're here, and we're going to do what you said. But what we're not going to do is that. We have, we have to draw a line. He, and are we ready to draw a line in the sand? And by the way, I want you to be clear to understand that when you are of a position like Daniel was over the governor, right? He was the, over, the, over everything. And he gave these people uh, administrative duties and, and um, responsibilities too. The, a lot of times, oftentimes, uh, the enemy will come for your, your, the people that you have ministry over, who you have um, power over, who you have purview over, who, have, who you um, work with that, um, that are laborers with you. They may not have the same title. They'll come for them first to try to get at you. And this is what's happening here. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury and his facial expression changed toward Shad Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He was done. Then he gave a command that the furnace was to be heated seven times hotter than usual. He was, what? We gonna, what? Okay, this is what you're saying? Written his teeth, probably, right? Having a moment. He commanded certain strong men in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. He, I want you to tie them up. Then these three men were tied up in their trousers, their coats, their turbans, and their other clothes and were thrown into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. They were going to really burn up because they had all the stuff on. Because of the king's command was urgent and the furnace was extremely hot, the flame of the fire killed the men who carried up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was so high to kill the people that carried them up, and they still wasn't dead. But these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell into the midst of the furnace of, the furnace of blazing fire, still tied up. They fell in there. Then Nebuchadnezzar of the king looked and was astounded, and he jumped up and said to his counselors, Did we not throw 
three men who were tied up into the midst of the fire? They replied to the king, certainly, O king. He answered, look, I see four men untied walking around in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. Four men. I threw in three tied up, but these four are walking around untied. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods, because it was. Just saying. Then, the Neb then Nebuchadnezzar approached the door of the blazing furnace and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out of there. Come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the midst of the fire. The satraps and the prefects and the, go the governors and the king's counselors gathered around them and saw that in regard to these men that the fire had no effect on their bodies. Their hair was not singed. Their clothes were not scorched or damaged. Even the smell of smoke was not on them. They didn't get burned. Because that's how God is. Nebuchadnezzar responded and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and res rescued his servants, who believed in, trusted in, and relied on him. They violated the king's, the king's command and surrendered their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree again, another, another decree, that any people, nation, or language that speaks anything offensive against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces. Now, these people are going to be cut into pieces. <laughs> and their houses be made of heap and, and of, of rubbish. For there is no other God who was able to save in this way. There is no other God. Then the king called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to prosper in the province of Babylon. After they declared and they believed in their God, they showed they believed in their God, he blessed them. He elevated them. Our time will come to be able to show that we believe, we trust it, and we worship our God. And we're all there because they believe, it says it right here, right? Because they believed and trusted and relied. When we show that we trust, believe, and rely, we believe, trust, and rely, then, then we'll get what we need and we'll get what we want. But we have to believe, trust, and rely. BTR, believe, trust, and rely. These are my thoughts. Are we ready to repent? If you have had, I, I have repentance issues. I want, I want, I, things I want to repent of always. I ask that you, you know, gather along with me, if you will. And if you need to be saved, please, let's say this prayer with me as well. Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of my life right now. I believe in my heart that you have raised Jesus from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to any of his devices. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. Jesus is my Lord, and I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Now all things become new. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have said this prayer with me, please put your name in the chat, and we will rejoice with you. And if you've said this prayer with me and you are um, looking of a, for a church home and don't have one in your area that you know of, please put your name, your city, and your state in the chat, and we will help direct you to a church home in your area as we have members all around the um, the United States. God bless you. God bless you. And can you do me one more favor? Can you like and share this page and subscribe to our channel? We will be most appreciative, and it will be a great thing to have you as one of our subscribers. God bless you. God keep you. Remember, it's about time.